All right, so I thought for starting this Inspiration Wednesday, because I'm starting in a brand new journal, that I would show you how to add a second signature in, because I usually build two signatures into each of my journals. Now, just like we sell the journals, we also sell the signatures, so um, super easy to do. What you're gonna do, let me take this open, is you don't actually put one signature inside the other. That's what usually people think. You're going to take Go into the back and you put one signature in behind. Now the signatures come already pre-punched um, and you should use a thin ribbon. Of course I'm not using a thin ribbon because I don't have a thin ribbon. So what I'm going to do is see how they have the grommets in the back. I'm going to go in to the holes in the back behind that original ribbon that's there. If I had a thin ribbon this would be easier. Yeah, I, I've given myself permission to swear at my book because I'm not doing it right. All right, so you see that there's the purple ribbon there, and this ribbon's gonna go into each of the grommets on the outside. Come out, come out. Okay. And it's kind of like a purse. And then I'm gonna go through each of the holes, little tiny holes, big fat ribbon, of the spine. Now, because they're pre-punched, it's a little easier, but it does get messy if you don't have a small ribbon. You can put on a needle, that would be a lot easier. But I, you know, I'm not going to make it easy. So I'm just going to go through each of the holes. Now the center inclusion is probably not going to be included with each of the holes because it's in the center and it's not going to reach the ends. That's okay. Just know that they're there because we're going to use them when we go back down through the center. Now that I've got the ribbons through both the top holes, I'm going to now go down through the ribbon with down through the center with both of them. This one gets a little bit trickier just because it's thicker and you've got to get through every page. So I might take a little bit more time. All right, so I have gotten through all the book, including the background. Now I just have to tighten this up. So I've just got to make sure that I can pull this ribbon taut through the centers of all those pages. Now that I've got it through there, I've got it nice and tight. I'm just going to tie a double knot around the ribbon just to keep it in place. And I'm just going to trim the ends and then we're good to go. All right, I've got my signatures in, so now I'm ready to go, and I'm on the first page, and I always feel a little bit of pressure that the first page should be the best, because, you know, it's what everybody sees when they open the book. So, outside of that, I usually only kind of have in the back of my mind that this kind of sets the tone for the book. And one day I should really just take out all my journals and, and, and put a thing up there, but you can really see the progression of how I've changed as an artist, kind of going through each book. And when I say that these are visual diaries, I truly mean that. They kind of show the progress and the changes and the twists and turns that I've done as an artist. And they kind of evoke the sentiment as well that I've kind of hopefully matured in that whole process as well. So that all said, that was stalling because I don't really know what I want to do. But I thought simplest thing to do is to start with stencils. I really, really like using stencils. So I'm going to go grab a couple of my stencils and some of my spray paints because that's really what's been making me happy lately and kind of just get started making some kind of layers in the background. Listen, I know this is going to be cruel to do to you today, but I just, this is what I want on the front of my book. And I know this video is for public consumption and it's just cruel what I'm about to do to you, but um, that's what I want. Um, this stencil you can't get yet. It'll be out at CHA, um, but you can tell I like it because I've used it a lot. So um, just to let you know, you will be able to get this stencil, but you can't right now. Hint, hint. Um, yeah, I, I like it a lot, and I think it needs to be sprayed with turquoise spray paint. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, it does. So I, I normally don't do this either, put wax paper underneath my book, but I thought, why not? Today's a apparently breaking all the rules day, so um, yeah, I'm going to spray this. Alright, so I spray that, I'm going to take this off, and of course you know I like to reuse, <laughs> that makes me happy, I like to reuse the stencil, so I'm going to take it over here, and I should probably widen this lens so you can see, I'm going to press it into my collage journal over here. 
This is my Collage Monday journal. I figure why waste good spray when I can repurpose it in here. Hey, I, I know I'm back with that stencil again, but this might be a cool trick because I didn't think about that. To get the other um, half, you know, where it's white on the background colored, I just line up the stencil and I can spray again. I'm thinking to spray with yellow because that's happy right there. And yeah, I know I'm getting this little section here that's not covered, but I don't care. Yeah, I'm thinking I want to go in with some Diary Log Yellow, which I just happen to have made into a spray paint, which I might need to make a little bit more. And uh, I'm thinking just going over that. Yeah, that looks absolutely dynamic. Love it, love it. And you see I sprayed the yellow and then it was a little bright so I just sprayed some of the white on top of it just to mute it down just a little bit. And then of course I took the stencil and went back into my Collage Monday journal. So just to show you that I had that in there. Waste not, want not. And uh, now that I have this, I'm just gonna dry it to make sure um, it's not going to blend into something else and I'll be back. All right, I've got that, it's dry. Now what to put on top? And as much as I don't think like, oh, that's where I wanna go with this, I just keep seeing this needs just a pop of red. And when I think red, I think poppy. So I think I'm gonna to have to put one or two poppies on there, or three, do I need three? Maybe just one, I don't know. See, these are decisions I just don't want to make. All right, so I like to draw them with the India ink. This always makes them really sloppy and messy. So they're kind of, you know, you don't really know what's gonna happen to it. Just holding the book straight, relatively. And uh, like maybe it's just one lone poppy could be just one. Maybe it's one large lone poppy. That, that, that's a possibility. One, and it, you know, the poppy shape, it's just arbitrary. It's usually the coloring inside that uh, makes the difference. I'm just gonna do one large poppy shape and it's just like a big, it's a big that. And I'm just gonna do this, okay? I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and we'll kind of see how this kind of finishes up. All right, so hopefully that ink is dry and I've got some gesso out on my palette pad here. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna fill that area with gesso. Mainly because I don't want the background to seep through my poppy design. I want it to be, you know, fairly opaque. I don't want blue and yellow coming through my poppy. So I'm just filling that in and I'm not really minding the lines. They're just a guide for me. All right, so the gesso is dry, and when I color my poppies, they're usually made up of three main colors, and I'm pulling those out right now. Okay, so poppy colors that I usually make are made up of pyrrole red, quinacridone crimson, and burnt umber light. So I'm just gonna put a nice little pile of that I'm at the bottom of my crimson here, which is just sad. And uh, let's get a nice little puddle, not too much. Uh, dime and then pyro red and burnt umber light okay so the light source of the poppy is that's where that pyro red comes in so I'm just gonna go in with that and you're like oh that's red it is and I'm gonna put just a smidge of water on my finger just so it blends in a little bit more I'm going to go with the crimson. Got that in there. I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'm just going to do a little bit of a stem. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use some of the gesso and I'm also going to use some sap green hue. Again, to find it. There it is. Just the slightest little bit. And I think I'm going to use a brush for this. Normally I don't use a brush on the canvas, but I'm thinking this is a little too small. Let me find a brush. This one will work. So I'm just going to go into the gesso. A little too much gesso. I'm just gonna kind of detail what that 
And I'm thinking, hindsight is 2020. I think I probably should have put a wash of color on the background of this or just at it first. And here's the reason. Because I kind of want to paint just outside of this. But because it's not gessoed, I didn't start with a gessoed. It's really, really absorbent. Which was good for the stencil. But what isn't good for what I want to do now. So I'm thinking maybe if I make a wash of gesso. Which means, you know, a mix of like 50-50 water and gesso. And... Mix it kind of on the palette first. And if I'm fairly careful, I could, you know, kind of just go like this. And that'll just dull just slightly, but hopefully put enough of a barrier so that the background isn't as absorbent. Not that the paint won't help. The paint will help. But I think, or at least I'm hoping that this watered down gessoed layer, and I'm putting it on really, really light. I might need to make it darker. Um, will help take some of the absorbency out of the background. All right, so I'm gonna do anthraquinone blue around the edge of the flower over the background, but not to completely cover it up. And this is kind of a scary choice for me because I'm not sure if it's the right one because um, it's really, really dark. So I'm gonna do, and hopefully it's not way, way absorbent. So I'm just gonna do, and hopefully I can let it flow around. I made a mess but um, I'm gonna put the center into my flower and I'm going to clip this side too I think or maybe I can do what I was doing on my book art really fat just so it's flat that's what I could do because I want to drop India ink on that center of that poppy to make the black center I'm gonna dry that and I'll be back all is not lost yet. I am going to go back in and kind of recolorize the stem. Let's see if I can't get some of that white and that green gold. Oh, that was too much. Note to self, that was too much. Too much water. use a nib pen with the black and outline the poppy as well. Still not convinced of what direction this is going to head in, but what I do know is I want some catch lights in that poppy, so I'll just do the things I know that I want, and uh, <laughs> hopefully something else comes to fruition about what I'm going to do with the flower. You know what I'm starting to think the solution is teal. Isn't it always? Isn't it always the solution? I know. I know. Just, just go with me on this.
behind home, but I just had a deja vu moment. So um, I just had to share that. But I like the turquoise better in there, blends better with the background. Still not sure what I want to do. Maybe like yellow polka dots to bring back the yellow over here. Not quite sure, but um, I'm happier. Much happier. I right bet. Thinking maybe bringing that turquoise over here. I gotta go with a what if moment. I gotta trust my gut and I just felt like, oh, maybe there needs to be a word in there. And the first word that popped into my head was purpose. So uh, I'm gonna write that in there. I'm gonna write it with white India ink and a nib pen. So I've got that. I went over it just a couple times with the India ink, but uh, yeah, I've got a message now. Now to finish it up. That's a whole nother story. I, think I might need a couple little black random dots down here. So we're gonna try. We're gonna try. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna put that underneath there. square though. Maybe. Oh, that's nice. Any more? Out of the dots comes a little bit of those alphabets I like. Maybe that. Now that would make me happy, wouldn't it? Let me dry that and then I'll spray this on top. All right, that's dry. Let's just see. Just get something random about here. I like that. I like that a lot. Do I want more? Maybe I want some coming out over here. Oh, I like that too. All right, so let's hold that thought. Maybe change it up. A smaller, like this one. Do I have like a couple little ones coming out of that one? Is that just crazy? Let me try that. I'll back. So I could go overboard with these stencils, so let's just see. Do I do another one, just kind of coming out of that one? Is that too much? I like that. Would it be crazy to do a little burst of them over here? Is that too linear? A little guy up here? That's too much, too close to the top. I'm just going to do this. Well, see, now that's nice. Now I want to put it everywhere. I want to put that everywhere. I'm going to dry that. I'll be back. All right, so this is what I've decided. I'm going to put more of that on there because it makes me happy. I'm going to put a little blurb of of a guy, maybe a number, maybe up there. A uh, number hard to get to. So let's do that. A little tiny partial spritz just to get something in the corner. And I think just a little spritzy over here, running off the side. Just Hopefully it's just a little. That's enough. All right, now I'm gonna dry that. I'll be back. Okay, one more spritz. Just a couple of those letters coming out of that one. Yeah, I'm happy. All right, again, something's nagging at me about the flower. Now that everything looks so bold, and the flower doesn't really look as bold outlined, so I'm taking a lot of the ink out of my dropper. And I'm gonna go around, and this should be a thicker outline. And I still want it to look sketchy, so it's not like a perfect outline. But what I really want it to do is drip kind of right around there. So I'm just gonna Take that, I'm still making it sketchy. Somehow it just doesn't want to be sketchy there. And I want it to drip somewhere around here. Oh, that's good. Cool. Oh yeah. Yes, 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 drying that. I'll be back. And now I'm feeling like the finishing touch will be this pop of red. My Tyrol red has dried. Let me get some more. There we go. Just the end of the paintbrush. And let's see.
honest with you. In the end, I really like how this turned out. I'm, I, I'm telling you, I always joke in class that once you put those alphabet stencils on there, it, it makes it perfect. And in this case, it's totally true. The drippage around the poppy, I don't know, the whole thing. I just like it. Um, I'm going to put this tag on here because I just think that's a total contrast too with the date. And I'm going to need a piece of tape. Okay, maybe two. Let's see, I'm going to put this kind of like here. Maybe three. And we'll stamp the date on there, which today is the 28th. I think. All right. And uh, rip that sucker off at the bottom. And I need a tiny attacher. Always takes me forever to find it. Oh, not today. One, two, three. Two and a half. Pull that one out. Three. All right, so um, note to self, keep keep going for it. You know what, you gotta work through it because if I stop at the ugly mess that I had when I was starting this, um, I would not have been as happy as I am right now. So this is a great kind of first page. It gives me a purpose, so to speak, for the rest of the book. It kind of sets me on my way and uh, I'm really happy with the colors. And I guess that's it for Inspiration Wednesday. I'm gonna go edit this sucker and head off to Target. Have a happy Wednesday.